So Michael, you had brought up the touching the stove earlier. Well, with that, there is there is pain involved, right? There was heightened emotions. So that imprinting is incredibly strong. So if I just go back and just tried to delete that story from my brain, right? The imprinting is still going to be there. I'm in a, I'm in a contradiction with my mind over, I'm not scared of this stove. That happened a long time ago, but that imprinting is, is so strong. It, it drives behavior through those emotions. And this brings up a lot of the work that we do because we want our clients to understand when they're in a heightened emotional state, that heightened emotional state then goes to default behaviors. And if you don't know that you're in a heightened emotional state, then you don't know that you're resulting to those default behaviors. So this is why in moving forward and creating new stories is so powerful because these new behaviors are going to rewrite that story in your mind. Very, very good point, especially in moments of high tension. That's when our prefrontal cortex, the logical part of the brain, likes to go offline because we want to preserve energy and our thinking brain takes a lot of energy. So put someone in a stressful situation, be it uh, being chased by a tiger or giving a presentation or seeing that person at a networking event that's really important to talk to, high stress moment, prefrontal cortex goes offline and we're doing what we've always done, which is what we've learned in the past, removes that uncertainty and means we're just standing there in the corner, not making eye contact, not talking to people. And that psychological need for certainty can also lead us to create the wrong stories around those past behaviors. It can color our memory of what happened in a different way than how it was actually unfolding in real life. So it's very easy and it feels very fulfilling to be like, okay, now I know why I have this fear. Now I know why I lack confidence in this one arena. It's because this one thing happened in the past. And now if I just spend time ruminating and thinking about it and replaying and visualizing it, I could do that in my pajamas. I don't have to go out and talk to a new stranger. I don't have to prepare a new pitch deck. I can just sit there and daydream that the pitch actually went swimmingly and I got my idea funded. But that doesn't actually lead to real world behavior change and results in your life. No, that's delusional. <laughs> like sitting there and telling myself that actually, re like I didn't get that job interview because I was totally overqualified and they were intimidated by me. I can tell myself that all day long, but it probably doesn't improve my interview skills. So it's, it's not about rewriting in your mind the stories that happened in the past. We actually want to impact our future behaviors. And what we are doing is we're staring at a blank page today and future chapters to be written. It is great to reflect on the past. It is great to recognize patterns. It feels very relieving to understand, oh, this is a behavior that I tend to do over and over again because of these past experiences. But what if tomorrow you don't want to behave that way? What if in the future you want to be able to walk into that room confidently and pitch effectively and know when you leave that room that you're going to get funded? Well, you can't do that by just daydreaming and thinking about all the past failures and pitches that didn't go your way. Yeah, for myself, I've spent many nights staring at the ceiling, going back through old stories, trying to figure out, well, what had went wrong in those situations? What could I have done better? Uh, why is this? this memory still haunting me or, or that I'm ruminating on it. Well, it's because I'm looking for problems. I'm looking for issues. I've drawn myself to those moments. But the most important piece to that is to understand that all of those past events, all of those memories that I'm ruminating on are taken without any context. So let's say it was a social event, maybe I said the wrong thing, upset somebody that I consider as a high value person, and now they're mad at me. So now I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking about what I had said, could I have said something different? Uh, was it as bad as I think it was? Or is that what I had said, is that even why maybe this person doesn't like me or I'm having issues with this person? But you can't put yourself back in that moment. You're not there in that emotional atmosphere. All of that is gone. All you have is these bits of fuzzy memory that you're, that you're trying to draw conclusions from. And 
there was a piece by Michael Shermer that had stuck in my mind. And, and in fact, I've uh, used this very uh, scientific uh, research to get out of jury duty, which is your memory of past events, especially if there was trauma involved or uh, there, was a, there was a lot of stimuli going on, your memory of those events are going to be distorted. And that distortion is going to cause you to draw out all sorts of things that make no sense, that have no relevance to what you're trying to do. So the, that rumination only gets worse. And you, your conclusions that you draw from that only get worse. And this is why a lot of people feel frustrated and then eventually exhausted by the whole thing because they notice a pattern, they're trying to figure out what is the cause of this pattern, and that abyss is endless. Mm -hmm. 